Hey everybody, welcome to the Author on Wheels podcast. My name is John Wood and I am affectionately known as Author on Wheels. This is a podcast discussing my books, my life, and my fight to survive. Join us as we have some incredible interviews with some incredible authors. Pauline Victoria is an inspirational thought leader that offers transformational perspectives based on her unique experiences as a woman born without arms and legs. She is the founder of One Egg Up Productions, a media company targeted at empowering, entertaining, and engaging people with disabilities. She does this through her YouTube channel and her weekly community calls she hosts called Crip Chat. She also produces and hosts the Small Victories podcast and coaches emerging entrepreneurs, through her community called Made for More on Facebook. With a can-do attitude and her ability to rise up to her daily challenges, she inspires people to have a no-excuses approach to life. Hello? Pauline? Hi, okay. Okay, thank God it worked. Okay, I was about let, me go, let me close my door, okay? So I don't have any, okay. Thank you, Ted. Take your time. Okay, great. Thank you for joining us. Um, sorry for the horrible connection issues. I don't know whose side it's on, and I kind of want to blame myself for being a poor planner. But things happen like that, especially when you live on the opposite side of the country in the most beautiful state in the entire world. <laughs> Thanks. Well, you know, we're disabled. We adapt. We roll with it. So Exactly. Exactly. Guys, welcome to episode number three of the Author on Wheels podcast. Today, we have an incredibly unique interview with an incredibly unique person. Today, we're talking with Pauline, who is an inspirational thought leader that offers transformational perspectives based on her unique experiences as a woman born without arms and legs. Usually we do not, we, usually we interview only authors on this podcast, but today we have the treat of listening to the life story and just getting to know Pauline Victoria, who was the founder of One Leg Up Productions, a media company targeted at empowering, entertaining, and engaging people with disabilities. She does this through her YouTube channel and her weekly community calls that she hosts called Crip Chat, which I am a part of. She also produces and hosts the Small Victories podcast and coaches emerging entrepreneurs through her community call or community called Made for More on Facebook. With a can-do attitude and her ability to rise up to her daily challenges, she inspires people to have a no excuses approach to life. And today we are blessed to have Pauline Victoria on the Author on Wheels podcast. Pauline, how are you, my friend? I am wonderful and so happy to be here. I, I may not be an author, but I am aspiring. So hopefully I can learn from you too, John. Exactly. And that's that's the main basis of the Author on Wheels podcast. You, yes, you in a sense may not be a quote unquote author of a book, but you are in a sense telling your life story the way it is, not any problems. You are You are the proof of a no can do or a can do attitude and how positive it can make anybody's life, no matter if they have a different ability or not. Right. So guys, this is such an incredible interview. We're going to get right on into it. Um, Pauline, we have some questions for you that we, um, I sent to you a few days ago and hopefully you're ready to answer these because I'm ready to hear what you have to say. Bring <clears throat> it. Bring it. <laughs> okay. So our first question, obviously, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I have on here, including your book titles and what led you to writing. But we just want to hear about you and the inspirational things that you have been doing, the podcast you have, the YouTube channel. Tell us all about that. You have the floor. All right. I'll tell you about all the things. Uh, well, I, you mentioned in my uh, introduction that I was actually born mm -hmm. without arms and legs. I know with audio, you don't get the the of being able to see each other. But um, yeah, I was born. Um, I'm I was born to my mom and father. My mother was uh, an immigrant from the Philippines. 
Uh, mm-hmm. And my father was a farm boy from Minnesota. And so they came together, met in the Air Force and had me as their firstborn child. Um, had no idea what was in store for them. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm a planner. I don't think of myself as spontaneous, but I guess I, I brought the surprise in their life. And they, uh, they uh, met the challenge and with such grace. And I know that they are um, heroes in my eyes and they Mm -hmm. are examples of what's possible. And through being reared with um, like with love, but also um, tough love. So it was this beautiful combination of nurture and love, Mm -hmm. uh, tough love. They really created this space for me to figure out what I was really made made of. Um, and if that meant they had to stand aside and allow me to be angry and throw a temper tantrum because I couldn't figure out how to sit up on my own or how to put food in my mouth, they allowed that space to, um, uh, you know, let me figure it out and fail and try again and fail and try again. And so I think that really instilled in me this ability to be willing to step out of my comfort zone and try something different and new um, and not have anyone go before me. You know, there's the saying that Mm -hmm. says I have to see it in order to believe it. And I really lived my life from the other perspective of I have to believe it in order to see it because there is no instruction manual on how do you live your arms with, how do you live your life without arms and legs? And exactly. Um, I, you know, that spirit carried me through. I went to college in Santa Clara University. I got to live in the dorm um, and started living independently. And it's not that it was, it was a university close to home, um, right. really for my parents, because uh, I wanted to go to San Diego, but um, they really wanted me to close by in case I needed them. But, right. you know, it was um, they they allowed me to experiment and, you know, it wasn't that I was trying to run away from anything um, from my home. All my needs were taken care of. I, it was wonderful, Mm -hmm. but I was running towards something. And I think there's a difference between running away from and running towards something. And I was really running toward this idea. Could I really live on my own? Because when you're a child with a disability, it makes, you know, you're protected in, in some ways. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the playing field is made equal for you, but in the real world, it is not equal. And so, um, yeah, so I started, I was learned to live on my own independently, learn how to give instruct in, uh, instructions to attendants, um, you know, how to manage my own caregiving. Uh, and, you know, eventually I, you know, graduated from college, worked in corporate America, and then eventually worked for nonprofits and um, government in the public sector and also uh, went on to get married, had a baby, moved to Hawaii. I drive, you know, so I really feel like I live a full life. And um, when we moved to Hawaii, I really, we did that so that I could really experience what it was like to be a mom and not have to work. Um, And so I I stayed home. So it allowed me a lot of time to um, be self-reflective and, you know, and, and experiment with other things. And so I stumbled upon entrepreneurship and actually it stumbled upon me. I was at a conference for a network marketing company and the speaker there was Les Brown and I was doing some business in the lobby on the phone. And this gentleman comes Mm -hmm. up to me and he says, I need to talk to you. And I'm like, what, who are you? I don't know who you are. I'm on the phone. He's like, I need to talk to you now. And I'm like, what? I'm like, okay, hold on. So I get off the phone and it is Les Brown. And he says to me, I'm listening to you talk and you have such a powerful voice. I want to invite you and whoever you want to bring with you to my conference in LA in four days. Um, And so that kind of started me on this journey of putting myself out there and really stepping into my gifts. And for whatever reason, the last couple of days, I've really been filled with this message um, because I know for me, I've had to grapple with it. And so I'm thinking, I'm feeling like a lot of people may need to hear this message is that we each have these beautiful natural gifts and talents. And, you know, so a lot of people refer them to our superpower, you know, the whole Marvel thing. 
but mm -hmm. we have these beautiful talents and gifts and power and we are so afraid of it um and mm -hmm. i played small for so long and usually when life you know oprah has a quote life whispers to you and if you ignore the whisper long enough it will scream and i feel like Wes brown was my scream life saying you were made for more and so um, what I am doing now, um, I'll get back to what you referred to as One Leg Up Productions, but what I am doing now is helping emerging heart-centered entrepreneurs who believe and who know that they're ready to step into their power and that they were made for more. And, um, you know, so uh, I'm really excited about that. But um, how John and I met, we did. I did start One Leg Up Productions as a media company to engage, entertain, and empower people with disabilities because I felt for so long we were complaining about how we're not represented in the media. And I was done mm -hmm. and tired of waiting for permission. So I created One Leg Up Productions as a way to represent people with disabilities. And um, I have uh, produced a few different uh, shows on One Leg Up Productions' YouTube channel. Um, but my primary show on there is called Chair Chats. It's a lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. And John has been um, on there as a, my guest as well. So you can check out that that episode. Uh, but, you know, it's it's just, it's lifestyle. It is not political driven. It is not advocacy driven. I mean, that can come play into our conversations mm -hmm. regarding lifestyle. But I just really mm -hmm. enjoy, you know, marriage, dating, parenting, fashion, a travel, anything regarding life, but from the perspective and relatability to people with disabilities. And that's why I really created that. Um, I did close season one for Chair Chat, so I'm taking a little bit of break from that right now. And also did start my Small Victories podcast, which is not disability um, dependent. It, it's inclusive to everybody as well as my Made for More community is open to everybody. So um, I'm expanding. I've expanded um, with 2020. I feel like pivot and expanding has been the words for 2020 and resilience. And so I am doing all of those things and uh, and I'm excited about what is coming up next. So in a sense, you're excited about what 2021 has to offer. Well, not yet. Yes. And at the same time, mm -hmm. I am not someone that waits around for things to come my way. So like when 2020 right. happened, a lot of people folded. And for me, yes. I took it as a challenge. I'm like, bring it. Let's go. And I grew my business. I responded to quarantine by creating Crip Chat, which is a weekly community call that we all get on. It can just be ourselves and talk about yes. things that matter to us. And I was, you know, yes. as a speaker, I don't get lit up by being on stage. What lights me up is talking with people, is being in conversation exactly. with people like this. And I just, it, it just fills me with so much joy to be in conversation. And that's where Crip Chat was born was, I don't want to speak at people. I want to speak with them. Yes. And as somebody who has been, a part of your life for a year i've seen i've seen the potential that pauline has i've seen the potential that pauline victoria has i've seen how inspiring you are during the crypt chat meetings i've seen how inspiring you are during your youtube videos i've, I've seen your i've listened to your podcast I, I've, I've i've listened to your podcast you, you actually your interview with les brown kept me awake until probably three o'clock one morning because I got on and I, I just, I was scrolling through YouTube, scrolling through Facebook, and somehow I typed in your name half asleep and was like, oh, there's that. So I've heard her talk about him before. Let's watch that. So I was watching that and listening to that, and I was completely inspired by what you had to say. And then I, I just kept on going, and I was just like, the more I delve into your your work life and your personal life and who you are, I, I looked and I was like, oh my God, this woman is inspiring to a point where I want to have her on my podcast. I want her to be part of my business. I want her to be able to, in a sense, inject her personality into me. And that's why when I reached out to you for this, to do this interview, I came in, uh, I came in on all fours. 
You know, I literally was like, I came wheels on the ground, basically saying, I'm ready. I, I, when I, ha- I want my listeners to hear your story. You are the, you are the woman that does so much and yet doesn't tend to give herself all of the credit because your your credit is giving others that boost that oomph that get up and go and that's exactly why you created the small victories podcast the and the made for more community one leg up productions all this stuff that you do is just another it's an extension of who pauline victoria is inside and out because you exude a personality of I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it going, I'm going to get it done, I'm a can-do person, nothing can, you know, even before we were able to do this interview, we were having connection issues, guys, and I even texted her and told her, you know, this podcast, this internet is like, it thinks it can, it thinks it can, but nope, you're done, screw you. <laughs> yeah. But that is, yeah, exactly, and that's not who Pauline Victoria is, guys. Pauline Victoria is the most inspirational and most thoughtful person ever. And she she does so much. And I'm so blessed to have her on. I honestly had questions geared towards uh, an author available on this uh, podcast. But since that doesn't actually happen, uh, since that's not you, I didn't have any actual questions. I just wanted to talk and see, and basically pick the brain of, of Pauline. If, <clears throat> if there's anybody listening today that has, like, a mindset of, I don't think I can get it done, I'm not going to be able to get it done, this, is, this circumstance is happening, that circumstance is happening, what, what are some words of wisdom that you can give my listeners that are having that issue? That are having the issue of... Of not having the get up and go attitude or not being able to having issues co- uh, connecting with their goals and getting their goals in order so they so that they can be the person that they want to be and the person that they want to accomplish the 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 goals they want to accomplish. Basically, what I'm asking is if there are is anyone here that has a problem with uh, reaching their goals or having trouble motivating themselves to get up and go? What would you say to them if they have that problem? Hmm. Well, I think first of all, I would ask them, why are they having that problem? Like as a coach, we ask questions because we believe, that the mm-hmm. answer lives within the person already. They just haven't had a person exactly. ask the right questions to get them to that point. So I would probably exactly. ask them first of all, like why, you know, why, what is behind the lack of motivation? Because here's the thing: I could give you some answer of like, you know, you just gotta pull your, you know, big girl panties on and just get up and go and just let the, it's just rah, rah, rah. Right. And and that's what a lot of motivator, right. master motivators do. That's what motivational speakers do and, and videos do. Then that's great. But oftentimes mm-hmm. there's things behind that that are playing a part in your lack of motivation. So, you know, we can't just throw a band aid on top of the problem. So if you're not feeling motivated, right. I would say the first pro- thing that you need to look at is why? Why aren't you feeling motivated? Are you not happy? And if so, let's go down that rabbit hole. Why aren't you happy? What would make you happy? What do you want? And I think that's a question that a lot of us do not take the time to stop and ask ourselves, what do I want? Mm-hmm. And in anything that I've achieved, any goal I've set in front of me and have, a, and have accomplished, it was because it wasn't the thing that I wanted. It was what that thing would bring me. So, for example, if I wanted to learn to swim or learn to drive, it, was, it wasn't the driving or the swimming that what I wanted. It was the freedom mm-hmm. that those things would provide me. So freedom is what exactly. I wanted. So 
you know, if you're not feeling motivated, there could be several things going on there. And without talking to anyone specific, I, I, you know, it's hard to imagine. Right. Right. But so if, but if they were wanted me just to speak at them of like what they could do. So, you know, maybe, maybe you haven't even stopped and asked yourself, what is it that I want? Because I think a lot of us also get caught up on this idea of like, I just got to create goals. So it looks like I'm creating goals and moving somewhere. But you really have no really real mm-hmm. desire to move in that direction at all. You know, so many, so many of us live our lives based on what other people, what we think other people want for us rather than what we really want. And so ask yourself, what do I want? What do I need to get that? Um, and, um, sometimes that's a hard question to answer because what we need to get what we want requires some hard work and requires us to do Mm -hmm. some hard things. Because for example, um, if you're around a lot of toxic people who don't believe in you, then that is not what you need to move in the direction you want. Mm -hmm. And that means sometimes you have to say goodbye to those people, you know, and it doesn't have to be in a bad, horrible way. It could just be like, you know, just starting to move towards someone, someone else, you know, someone different that does believe in you and can give you the energy um, that helps grow in the direction you want to grow. So what do you want? What is it that you need to get what you want? And then from there, um, and, and when, when I say, what do you want? Like, what is it? Do you want the freedom? Do you want the fulfillment, the feeling mm-hmm. of being needed in the world? Do you want to leave a legacy? Do you want to serve others? You know, and that brings you fulfillment, like, right. So really get clear on what it is you want. So mm-hmm. I use this framework and, and, and I, it's not like I created the framework and then started living my life this way. If I were to reverse engineer my life, mm-hmm. this framework uh, arises from what I've already accomplished. And it's, I call it the visa framework and the visa framework each letter it's an acronym. So V is for visualizing. Mm -hmm. So you got to visualize where you want to be, who you want to be, what you want to do and what you want to have. But it has to begin with who do you want to be? Because we attract who we are, not what we want. Okay. Right. Um, And so visualizing and then the i is for internalizing we internalize we look inward and i have this um the saying that came to me and i posted on my instagram it says the greatest adventure you'll ever have is going within and for me that means we're always so busy looking outside of ourselves to fulfill us and and to and to um, give us experiences but when we can become go inward and be more self-aware about who we are, then we are going to make so many discoveries. We're going to grow. We're going to maybe see things that we don't like um, and then be able to fix them. Um, you know, like whatever it is. But internalizing means just going within and checking in with yourself, asking those questions. What it is? What it, do I need? What do I want? Looking at your mindset, looking at how you respond to challenges. You know, some people can't handle it and they just want to run and hide that fight and flight, that fight versus flight, (laughs) you know, mentality. It's like, some people are like, I'm out of here. And some people are like, Duke's up, ready to go. Um, So um, I'm on the fight side, by the way. Um, Not that I like fighting, but I am, I am willing to stand in, in, you know, in the face of resistance in order to grow on the other side. but exactly. And then so the S is strategize for Visa. The S is strategize. And that means taking inventory of mm-hmm. the resources that you have available to you. What can you do right now with what you have? Because nothing happens without action. So it's one thing to, to set your goals. It's another thing to go get them. And this framework is what I use to go right. get them. So um, S is strategize and A is actualize is the action taking. Um, and it's not a step-by-step process. It's they kind of all go together, right? So in the actualizing, you sometimes have to yes. go back and like, okay, wait, does this action match with the vision I want to achieve? You know, or 
is this vision aligned with my internal mindset? And if not, what do I need to work on right there? You know, so, you know, it's, they all kind of work together. I, you know, they're more like pillars of a house than a step-by-step yes. um, instruction manual. Wow. That, that I'm blown away. That, that is a mouthful of positive that I think I even needed to hear. And I'm the host of this podcast. (laughs) This is exactly. And, you know, that's kind of what we need to look at ourselves and do, you know, exactly. And, you know, even in the notes of this podcast, uh, in the description, I'm going to try to put the visa method, if that's okay. Okay, good, because what I'd like what I'd like to have people do right off the bat before they even click on this podcast, read the description and learn that method. And then when they go in and hear this part of the interview and they hear you talking about the visa method, they'll know, oh, that's what I need to do right off the bat. And coming from somebody who has, quote unquote, thought to survive, both of us have done that in a sense. And I even wrote, like I said, I even wrote the book called A Fight to Survive, which you guys can get a copy of if you call or if you contact me via my Facebook page, Author on Wheels, which will be linked in the information of this episode. But guys, to end this interview, I'm like, I'm honestly, I'm flabbergasted. I have never had an interview like this before. And I would like to take the opportunity right now to thank you, Pauline, for stepping out of your comfort zone, even though you basically do this for a living and to sit down with us and to give us basically a nugget of useful information from someone who has overcame adversity and stood adversity square in the eye and looked at it square in the eye and said, goodbye adversity. I'm rolling away. I have better things to do than stare at you. Because all we we all know that adversity is an ugly creature. And it's up to us to find ways to overcome that ugly adversity. And so I hope that you folks that are listening to this episode take this information to heart because you have a story to tell. And it's up to you to find out how you want to write that story, how you want to tell that story, how you want to live that story. So again, we'd like to thank you, Pauline, for joining us on the Author on Wheels podcast. You, you are an inspirational person. You are a, you are one of my best friends, and I thank you for taking your time out from your busy life to sit down and just give us stories and inspiration that I hope y'all can listen to because. This has been episode number three of the Author on Wheels podcast. And to end, I would like to invite you guys to join the Author on Wheels community by liking us on Facebook at by searching Author on Wheels. And you can visit our website, which will be linked in the description. You can also follow me personally on Instagram and Twitter. And guys, to end the episode, I would like to utter the quote that I give all the time on YouTube, which is, I tell my story on wheels. What about you? Again, this has been the Author on Wheels podcast, and we will see you on the next episode. You're welcome. Thank Thank you, Pauline. Bye, guys. On behalf of the Author on Wheels podcast, I would like to thank our guest today, Pauline Victoria, for taking the time to sit down and talk with us about her life story and how she is so positive, even in the face of adversity. We love you, Pauline. Thank you.